Hello and welcome to another Securities Lending Saturday. I'm Roy Zimmerhansel. I'm your host. And today we're going to be talking about the story that has everything. It has SPACs. It has short selling reports. It has allegations of fraud. It has SEC investigations. It has threats of delisting. It even might have an NFT. So this is the story that has everything. I hope we're just going to go through that today. So if securities lending is your business, if you're part of the infrastructure, a lender, a borrower, or just plain interested, then this is the place for you. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Roy Zimmerhans on another Securities Lending Saturday Live. Welcome back. It's another sunny day. It's a little bit warmer, but still cool, but the sun is out and that always makes me smile. So as I said, today we're going to be talking about a short selling report that was issued on Faraday Future Intelligent Electric, FFIE, in October of last year. I have no unique insights into this story. I'm just putting together what I see in the public domain and want to demonstrate what can happen when one of these reports gets issued and, and how companies respond and what the outcome might be. So without any further ado, I'm going to get started on this. Let me just bring up my slide. As I say, Faraday Future Intelligent Electric Limited, I think, or Inc. And it is a short story. Like what I did there? Okay. Let's just uh, go ahead. So today, this is, in fact, this is, I think, week 44. So we've been doing this for a little while. So hopefully uh, you're picking up some information on this and uh, learning as we go along and sharing information with me so I can learn as well. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Next week, I'm actually going to be off again. I have uh, another one of my sort of charity events that I have to do next uh, Saturday. So I can't be with you live. So the next session we'll be doing will be on Saturday, the 7th of May. And that will be a free format Q and a session. So email me with any questions that you have. I drop my email at the, at the end. Maybe I can even pop it now and show it to you. Hold on. Where is my little corner picture gone? I usually am stuck in the corner there so you can see me, but it doesn't want, it doesn't want to do that today. So whatever, hopefully you can hear me. Okay. All my audio notes say that everything is fine from a sound point. If you want to email me with any questions that you want to see me answer on the Q and a on the uh, 7th of May, just email me the questions at that email address, and I'll make certain that we get to uh, cover those on the day. Okay. Now let's go to the session. What we're going to talk about today is a little bit of the company background, the role that short selling researchers play, the involvement in this particular story of China Evergrande, ironically, uh, a SPAC merger, internal investigations that the company launched and the findings of those. SEC gets involved, NASDAQ gets involved, and we'll just wrap up with a market response in the past couple of weeks and see what the impact of all of this activity has been. So remember, this is only for informational and entertainment purposes. You should always speak to a professional before taking any kind of action in markets, probably any kind of action in just about any aspect of life. Always speak to an expert. Of course, if you like this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe. Uh, if you are interested in getting notified, every time that I post up a new video. And uh, if you subscribe, you'll be, uh, and you ring that little bell, then you will be notified, not just receive it and, or have to look for it. Okay. So let's get rid of some of this stuff. We'll hide that out of the way and we'll get back to the slides and now we'll get into the story. So the idea for the show really came to me as I was going through one of my news emails. And one of the headlines was Faraday Future Limits Founders Rule after completing an internal probe. I was aware that there was an internal probe going on, but I haven't really been following the company. So I wanted to see because look, I believe that short sellers can find things that 
uh, company management, board of directors, major investors, regulators. I think that sometimes these short selling reports can trigger an investigation and hopefully that will be for the betterment of the company. They'll take action. They'll investigate it. If uh, they, there's any validity to the findings, they'll take action and put the company on a better pathway for the future. And that way I see short sellers as playing a kind of policeman role. And so I wanted to see whether this investigation, this internal probe, which clearly resulted in some action, whether it was meaningful action and, uh, and what the impact has been. So that was why I wanted to look at a little bit of the background of the company. It was, it was founded in 2014 by a, a Chinese entrepreneur. Of course it's headquartered in California. And one of the things about their business strategy is that they are focused on the high end of electronic vehicles. So they, they aren't in the, the, the mainstream market yet. They aren't even in the higher end. They're at the highest end. So a comparison is really with the, the Maybach, which is, which is top dollar vehicle that you're competing with. So it really is a shooting towards that, the highest possible standard. Now the company itself has had all kinds, all kinds of uh, financial issues throughout its history. In 2017, the founder, in fact, declared personal bankruptcy. They found a new, new chairman to lead the company, but they again, struggled for money. China Evergrande stepped in and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then there was an IPO in July of 2021, where they emerged with another, another SPAC. So it's one of the, one of the companies that came out of the uh, SPAC phenomena over the last uh, couple of years. Then of course, the genesis of this story, which was the short selling report that was issued by J capital research in October of 2021. Then recently there was an SEC subpoena and, and most recently, of course, which is what triggered specifically this show was the company announcing the results of their internal investigation, which has been going on for some time. So these are some of the headlines that, that have attached to the company in recent years. Just a quick reminder of the role of short sellers. So to me, while many people will look at the negative side of it, I think the positives that they bring is first of all, any short selling activity, whether it's fundamental or just computer driven, the reality is that a short position brings a different perspective to markets. It adds volume and turnover and improves liquidity because you have other investors uh, coming into the market that otherwise wouldn't be able to trade without the ability to short sell. So just more activity, which makes markets more liquid. But really specifically what I want to focus on here is that it can expose fraud or bad practice within a company. That's within a company overall, within a specific division, or even at the individual product level. So I think they play a valuable role because short sellers are profit motivated and therefore have an incentive to look into companies, to look for problems that they can exploit for their benefit. But look, who else is going to do that? Regulators will look at filings and sometimes they find things and eventually the truth will out, but not necessarily always. Investors in the company, well, they have a vested interest, as the name suggests, that the company's share price does well. So it's unlikely that publicly anyway, large shareholders are going to out a company, even if they uh, are uh, suspicious of bad practice. So I think that's really the key role for this specific story, this video. Of course, short selling is a risk management technique that can be used directionally or as a hedge. And of course, one of the things that I think is really super exciting is that short selling is becoming increasingly available to retail individuals as well. And I think that's an ongoing trend that will hopefully never be reversed and it becomes increasingly available around the world, which seems to be the case. So I just want to have a quick look at elect electronic vehicles. And I asked the question, is it the industry that keeps on giving for short sellers? What I've tracked here is several companies, five companies in the EV space. Of course, the big daddy is Tesla in kind of the orange line here. This line goes back to the start of January, 2021, because that's when the SPAC merger for Faraday was announced. So that's the baseline. So this is all relative price movement to January 1st, 2021. Now you can see that Tesla share price has gone up 42%. However, all of the other companies that I've got listed here 
they're all they they're all down pretty heavily. And so you can see the compare and contrast between Tesla's success and other companies, some of which have been the target of other short selling reports. And I'll come to that in a minute. But but look, if you're a short seller, this looks like a pretty happy place to focus your attention. As I said, uh, the company has always had financial problems uh, or questions about its finances. And in 2018, China Evergrande became uh, or came to the company's rescue and they became the uh, largest shareholder in August, 2018 with an investment of somewhere between 850 or $860 million and other transactions or other aspects of the deal, which would have amounted to about two, $2 billion. So uh, pretty big, pretty hefty amounts. What I've done here is looked at the China Evergrande share price. You can see that it was at quite a buoyant time right around here in August of 2018. So they're feeling pretty bullish, not all time peaks, but pretty darn big. But I got to tell you, I lived in Hong Kong for four years when I was at HSBC and China Evergrande was always one of the most in-demand stuff for short sellers. So it's ironic that this short selling target would uh, come to the rescue of another company, which would become another short sellers target in future. Of course, the China Evergrande story uh, proved out over time that the short sellers were right. The company was over leveraged and, and the share price in fact was suspended in March and, and their target right now is to come up with a debt restructuring plan and relaunch July or announce the restructuring in July and be relisted and start trading again subsequently. But, but yeah, China Evergrande has made a lot of money for securities lenders. Of course, if you're an investor, you've also lost quite a lot of money in it, which is partially offset by your securities lending revenue. So if you're going to be a shareholder, you might as well generate some additional income from the position, right? Because clearly the company ran out of steam uh, and ran out of money, a, a lesson to learn there. As I said, in July, uh, sorry, in January, 2021 property solutions acquisition corp announced that it was going to be merging with uh, Faraday future in it's one of these SPAC transactions that the new company would be completed and uh, launched on July 22nd. And, and from Faraday's point of view, the good news is that it had access to about a billion dollars of new funding going into the company, which is, which was uh, certainly welcome uh, and needed as part of the offset to the ongoing financial issues the company was facing. Because at this stage, of course, they still have not created a, uh, a production vehicle yet, despite having been founded in 2014. So then we have the short selling report from J Capital Research, and they I quite like the title that they have here, EV for Faraday spells embezzlement via, which is what they suggest, which I think is quite funny, whether it's true or not, it's not really up to me, but, but certainly quite funny. They made really several key uh, challenges. One is about the owner effectively saying he's untrustworthy, had a bad track record, had lots of failures in his background. And of course, as I said, declared personal bankruptcy in 2018, questionable questions about production, as they said in the opening line of their report, we don't think Faraday future FFIE and EV spec will ever sell a car. So far, it's been nothing but a bucket of money, bucket to collect money from U.S. investors and pour into the black hole of debt created by it. What they're saying is that even if they produce cars, we don't think that they're going to sell them. They had questions about a number of different factories, which were announced and never really built or the technology not being ready for mass production, as they say, and that there was a questionable set of reservations that were announced. And interestingly, they draw an analogy to challenges that Hindenburg Research, another research firm, challenged for another EV vehicle. And literally the week after Hindenburg challenged the, these reservations as being uh, dodgy, questionable, or outright fake, for the other company, all of a sudden the, the FFIE reservation figures stop being reported. That's quite interesting. Again, questions about finances and money being, whether it's actually real money or real invoices that were being paid out. So question about the source and disposal of funds. 
And it also suggested that many of the core shareholders would be poised to sell out as soon as they could after lockups were expired. And so what that would mean is that there'd be a flood of shares on the market from these owners that wanted to reduce or maybe even entirely eliminate their positions, which of course affects the supply demand equation, which would also drive down the value of the stock. So lots of challenges here, lots of question marks really across the board, as far as the company is concerned, the company's first, oh, so before I go into that, I, I, it talks about some other short selling reports. In fact, the title is move over Lordstown. There's a new EV scam in town. What they're talking about is the Hindenburg research report into Lordstown Motors, again, alleging that it's effectively a, a fake and a fraud. Another Hindenburg report into EVs was on Nikola. We did a, a blog post about that, and that's the link for the blog post. I'll put it in the show notes as well. EVs, a great hunting ground for short sellers looking for opportun opportunities to, to out companies. Okay. So the company, after the short selling report came out on the 7th of October, the 8th of October, we see that the founder here says, watch out J capital research. It's not the first time you have made a fool of yourself. And so he has challenged J capital's allegations. Look, it's a, he's identified as a specific source of the problem. This is him hitting back, but you know, nevertheless, he's a company executive and his words clearly carry weight. Not long after about a month, the company itself actually said that they were going to be uh, launching an investigation. So they were going to launch an internal investigation, uh, into the allegations made in the short seller report. And it clearly, you know, identifies that. And to me, that's fantastic. That's how it should be. As I said at the, in the opening, if a short seller finds something uh, that is questionable, the company should look at that. Because if they can rectify it before it becomes a bigger problem, they can resolve the issue and move on and move forward with a more positive outlook. If they can properly refute the short seller's allegations, again, that's also a positive. So just dismissing it, um, it just seems to me a rather foolhardy approach. And that's, I, I've often talked about uh, Netflix as an example, where they were often challenged by short sellers and initially fought back and eventually went, you know what? The reality is maybe we should listen to the short sellers, see if they have anything valid to say. Maybe there's something we can learn from and uh, became less antagonistic. Now, of course, uh, Netflix has just had a pretty horrific set of figures in terms of losses of subscribers. Who knows what their attitude would be going forward, but, but certainly historically it, it moved into a more positive relationship with short sellers. But anyway, so the company announced it. So to me, that's a pretty positive sign. Of course, what that meant was that the company wanted to actually do more investigative work before they were going to do their regular filings. And that meant that they were going to fall afoul of the NASDAQ quarterly filings that they had to do to remain listed. And so NASDAQ issued a, an announcement saying that you're going to be delisted. The company engaged with them and was extended. And they said, we're going to be doing this internal report, but that's extra pressure on the company. Clearly extra pressure on the stock and that particular day it, it dropped 3% when that story was. Then the company did an interim update, right? So they announced in November that they were going to be doing an investigation. It's now February and what they said that they found inaccurate statements were made to investors. The chairman was demoted to be a regular board member but he was still on the board. There was a new chairperson announced, Susan Swenson, and they also announced a 25% cut in salary for the chief executive and for the founder and structured it so that they would be reporting into uh, the new chairperson. Before the full report came out, there was some action taken. You can judge for yourself whether you think that was sufficient, but it was something. And then of course, later in the month, I told you it was an NFT angle to this. The, uh, the company announced a supplier IE medals. So electronic awards, awards for the app users, they have an app and the suppliers can get to get awards for that. And in the article where I show the source for that, he's really likened the structure of these medals or electronic awards 
to NFTs. So whether they will trade as an NFT or not, who knows, but, but it was a, an interesting and timely angle. The SEC themselves, so you gotta look at it, short sellers. The short seller in October says inaccurate statements. The company says in uh, February, after several months of internal investigations, that there were inaccurate statements made. And about six weeks after that, the SEC has decided to subpoena the company to talk about the, or to reveal information about the inaccurate uh, statements for investors. So that's the kind of the time frame. We're talking about really several months, six months after the, after the short selling report comes out, the SEC issues or takes some public action. Of course, all of this means that the research and the timing and the investigation and all of that is continuing to go on. And again, NASDAQ jumped in again and said, if you don't get your filings in and, and now the latest date is by May 6th then you'll be dis delisted again, or be delisted came the threat again. So we'll see if they do that. Company has said that they, you know, the report is done now, that they should be able to meet the May 6th timeframe. They expect to, and everything will be fine and wonderful. So we'll see about that. We haven't got long to wait. It's whatever that is, two weeks. So then the big news story, the thing that got me interested in this, the internal investigation results came out on the 14th of May. Again, I was uh, hoping to have this out last week uh, for various reasons that didn't happen. So what did the investigations find? Uh, well, or what was the outcome of it? The, the founder uh, continues in the same job that he's had since 2019. That's the, that's the same, same rule, same position that he had since, since giving up being CEO. The only difference is now it's not an executive office. I'm not certain that actually makes that much of an impact, but, uh, but you can make your own mind up. Another board member was put on probation for six months, but gets to stay on the board. Even a naughty boy, but you know what? It's okay. You can keep your job, but we're going to keep an eye on you and we'll let you know whether you actually pass. And then the founder, Gia, his uh, nephew, uh, who has been suspended since that interim update. So he's been suspended without pay since January. And now as a result of this internal report has announced his resignation. And the company said that there were also other actions, but they didn't specify those in the review. It's up to you, but that doesn't look like a heck of a lot uh, of action to me. So what did the market think? This is the week before, this is from the week before the report, the red dots show when the report was made and this is yesterday's close. So you can see the market's not too it with everything that's been going on. So they make your own mind up on that. In summary, I just want to wrap this up and the short seller report identified issues. So it, the short seller J capital research challenged the founder, challenged the finances, challenged the production, the company itself investigated it. They took some action. Is it enough? You know, my personal view, no, but I'm member, I'm not a professional investor and can't be an advisor, but it doesn't seem like they done all that much, really the same one, one person, one person has gone in, in the interim report in February, one other, one other executive resigned. So it has been a couple of people, but really fundamentally, I don't see that much has changed at all. And the question is, did all of JCAP's allegations get addressed? Again, as you go through it, I'm not convinced that's really the case. Uh, so the SEC continues to investigate the company. So there may still be more action coming. And the company still has the NASDAQ filings as a challenge. So the real question for me fundamentally is what would have happened without JCAP's report? Well, the reality is without that report, none of that would have happened. So whatever the company did find, whatever misleading statements were made to investors, that would continue to be the case. Some of the people who have been demoted or moved into different jobs were presumably moved into those jobs for a reason and moved out of those jobs for a reason. And they, absent the JCAP report, they would still be in more powerful positions that they're in. Whether that's enough, again, time will tell. To me, this is, this is what the outcome of that short selling report is. So if we go back, I should have put this in as a, as an additional slide, but if we just go back again, 
to that. Here we go. That's the slide I'm looking for. If we go back to here, the, the JCAP report came out around this spot here. And so it looks like it has dropped uh, pretty significantly since then. It was already on its way down along with many of these other EV producers, but you can see that the comparison to a couple of these others, it has accelerated down more quickly and who knows how much further it has to go. To me, the short selling report by JCAP triggered at least more understanding and investigation into the company that puts investors into a better place that puts the market into a better place because there's more information. And that also means that companies that do follow the rules and don't make misleading uh, statements won't have that wind going against them. And there's a real differentiator between companies that follow the rules and companies that will be found out. So to me, that's the role of short sellers. So as I said, look, that's it. I'm out next week. I will be doing the question and answer session on the 7th of May for the next Saturday session. Uh, email me any questions that you have. I look forward to that. We got half a dozen really good questions in last time. Hopefully we can have that again. I taught, I, I questioned how often you wanted to see the question and answer sessions. We had more people voting for monthly than any other time frame, but I, I think that's a bit too frequent. So it's been a couple of months. So and maybe it's time now to do that again. So that's it for, I hope you have a, I hope you found it interesting, right? To look at that continuum of activity, right? That's the really valid role that short sellers play in the market. And of course, securities lending is fundamental to enabling those short sellers to short the positions, right? So I hope you found it interesting. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday, the rest of your weekend the rest of your week and I'll see you again in two weeks time. So that's it for me over and out and I look forward to catching you next time.